Spencer. He was once dubbed the hardest man in London, and uh, who am I to argue with him? You probably know him, like I do, as Eddie Davis, the gang boss in ITV's series The Knock, which goes out on Sunday nights. Please welcome, with the greatest possible respect, Lenny McLean. <laughs> Welcome. Nice to see you. How are you? I said, I said, Lenny McLean. I'm going to have to ask you this. I've got the, I've got the Radio Times here. I mean, you, you were a boxer and now you're an actor. It says uh, Eddie Davis is played by Leonard McLean. Yeah, is this, is well, this? Uh, you got all lovey on us now? No, I ain't gonna never go lovey. But I want to be a bit faster than <laughs> I'm on the telly. Leonard, you're an actor now, yeah, are you? Yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, it's a better world, isn't it? I mean, you hit someone on the chin in the street, they want to give you five, you do it on telly, they want to give you five grand. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about how you got into into acting. I mean, where did the part in the knot come from? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. All my life I've been involved in the other world. And I bumped into Mike Reed one day and I said, Mike, you're not even a good actor, you just play yourself. He said, Len, you've got to get in the game and play yourself. So that's what I've done, you know, I've made a few inquiries, got me equity card, and I went for a casting, and, uh... Because it's normally quite difficult to get an equity card, I mean, yeah, how did you go about persuading them? He asked them, who's going to say no to them? <laughs> no, no, what, what I've done, I actually went down there, uh, and uh, I sang to them. Uh, <laughs> you sang to them? <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, uh, please don't say no, and they give it to me. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I, and I got... I like the acting, it is fantastic, and uh, I went for a casting on the knock, and I met the director and the casting guy, and uh, they didn't want me, but even though I played the part well, but behind the scenes when I got the part, I heard what happened, Paul Knight, the producer said, no, I want to give Lenny a chance, and it's people like him, if they give more people like us a chance, we can come from our world and get into that world. I mean, do you think you're going to be a bit typecast, though? I mean, you come across no, as sort of an underworld I mean, gang boss in this. No, I mean. oh, yeah, but I mean, uh, I play the part well, didn't I? Oh, well, well yeah. I mean, you've obviously, you know, you know, completely cast against type in this. Then. No, I've been rehearsing for 30 years. So what other parts? I mean, do, do you fancy? I mean, do, do I see you doing Hamlet or something? Yeah, I'll do Hamlet. Yeah? What is the car commercial? No, you, you know, oh, my son, are you coming down? I'll... <laughs> No, no, because uh, he just walks in and if I get caught, he'll give me a right hand. I'll see you in the morning. You know, no, no, I don't suppose I'll ever do that, mate. Do you, I mean, do you think if you'd have got into the acting lark early, your life would, would, would have been different? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's like, you know, if I'd have got into the acting, I think I'd have been a good actor. Because if you want something, you put your blinkers on, you say, I want that, and you'll get it. But you've got to be, you know, you say, I want it. And I've go heard for tell it. that Bruce Willis is. is uh, I work with Bruce Willis on. Uh, uh, his latest movie. What's that called? Uh, <laughs> the Fifth Element. The Fifth Element. Yeah. And he's the nicest guy you could ever wish to meet. Because when you meet the big stars, they're so down to earth and your own. I mean, he had a dressing room downstairs. He had uh, a wine cabinet, a coloured telly, a bed, a shower. It was beautiful. And next, uh, there was another couple of stars next door. They had the same. I was stuck up in the loft. I had a chair. <laughs> table and I thought myself I think they're taking the piss <laughs> <laughs> I thought you know I, I didn't want to say nothing because you, if people like us raise their voice what they go they go we should never have casted him so I thought well, I'm not saying nothing because it's a 60 million dollar movie and, uh, and I'm with all the top stars so I thought I'll make out I'm a top star so I come out of the dressing room I went downstairs and they said, then you're supposed to stay in your room. I said, no. So I'm going to sit down here. I was right outside Bruce Willis' dressing room. So he's come back after after one of the shoots. He's smothered in blood like makeup. He went, listen, 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 listen. He said, I want to tell you a joke. And I thought, and I said, hold on, let me just ask you something. How much are you getting for this? He said, you're not nosy, but I'm going to tell you because you're so big. He said, <laughs> he said, I'm getting $20 million. I said, uh, well, that's a bit a bit more than me. He said, will you get? I said, I said, four and a half grand. I said, you don't want to swap dressing rooms. He said, no, 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 no. <laughs> and anyway, he told me a couple of jokes. Fantastic. I went to him because, you know... It's a family a, show. It's a family show. Yeah. The Adams family uh, show. And yeah. then he went back in the dressing room. Uh, and I went back in my dressing room. I thought, I don't know. I've got a neck dressing room. And then when he went out for the next shoot, I went in and had a shower and come out of mine. 
I went upstairs. Well, maybe, maybe if he'd seen what I'm going to show now, yeah. he'd have given you up his, his dressing room without any problem at all. This is a film that the London programme made of you when you were bare knuckle fighting. Let's have a look at it. No, this is unlicensed one. This is unlicensed, OK. Just for that fight, that that was in. No, tell tell yeah, us how. Yeah, we saved thirty grand just for that fight. I mean, we 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 was two powerful guys. And if you say to someone, uh, then would you like to fight Lenny or, or the other guy? They go, oh, no. But that's how we got our living. I mean, I used to go, I used to go uh, Derby Day fight bare knuckles. I used to go uh, car places bare knuckles, and I smashed my ass to pieces. But. So you differentiated, though, between unlicensed and bare-knuckled. You had gloves on there. Yeah, What's because the, what are the rules in unlicensed boxing? Well, no, no, because you... you t I mean, I used to say to the guy, how do you want it? You went all in, that's everything goes, or, or a strainer. And they, uh, they, it's up to them whatever way they want it. What do you mean, all in, everything goes? Kicking, everything goes, biting, everything, butting? everything. But the thing is, you know, uh, but... <laughs> but, you know, we didn't interfere with the public. We don't interfere with the guy at the bus lot. We're two big, powerful guys fighting the toughest guys all over the country. I went to America in 1986. On my own, I was seven hands in the airport. I went to New York, they picked me up in New York, they took me to the plaza, they put me on the 40th floor. The next day I went to Columbus Avenue in a bottle warehouse where they stacked bottles up. And I fought the toughest guy in New York, bare knuckles. I broke that hand, I broke that thumb. They gave me the beer dough. I went back to the hotel on my own. And I thought myself, well, hold up. I've got two broken hands. If they come in with the money back, I won't be able to hit them. <laughs> so I think what I'd better do is wait at the airport. So I waited at the airport for eight hours, fell asleep, got on the plane, got home, went to the hospital, plastered my hands up, went home, gave my wife the money, I went to bed. My two kids come and said, Daddy's been fine again. I've been all the way around the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, Frank, Frank, I mean... I mean, I don't know whether you've ever been to any of these unlicensed fights. I mean, that looked more ferocious than any fight I've ever seen. I mean, how, how would these guys fare if they, if they try to fight professionally instead of fighting... Well, I mean, I saw Lenny fight on, on these unlicensed shows. He fought once at Yorkshire Grey and I went to it. I mean, someone who got hold of Lenny when he was younger, I think he could have been a great fighter. And it's interesting, because we've got a, we got a fax here for, from... Uh, <laughs> we've got a, fra a fax here from someone else called Lenny, Lenny Merson, who wants to know that, you know... If you were younger and you'd gone into the professional game as opposed to the route you took, would well, you be up there instead of Lennox Lewis competing against Tyson? Well, you could never say that, but all I can say is if there was more people like this chap here about uh, unguided young kids into the boxing, there'd be less people about like me. I mean, I've had a violent life. Uh, it wasn't a life I chose. It was a life I'd done to get a living. I've known violence from for 40 years. I've been shot twice, left for dead, I've been stabbed, I've been nicked for a murder I've never done, I've been minding the roughest, toughest clubs in England, I've had 20,000 barroom brawls, I've got pins in my hands, and it wasn't a life I chose, it was a life that come my way. You've, you've t I mean, you've taken a lot of punishment, you've oh, dished yeah, it out. What's the yeah. worst thing you've ever done to anyone? Uh, in one of the uh, bare knuckle fights, uh, I bit a go guy's nose off. <laughs> Yeah, but I know, but listen, what you got to understand... Shane, I mean, you, that, no, we just you've gone, you, time. You've <laughs> gone yeah. green. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you like the fight game. Could, could you stomach watching that all the time? I, um, I was, I'm terrible, actually, watching no, it. I mean, lady, taking part in it is something different. I mean, it yeah, gets quite rough on Gladiator. I was nothing like me. I haven't bitten nobody's nose off yet. Yeah, um, but see, I wonder what we call I mean, Lenny if he was on Gladiator. Sir, I certainly do. I mean, Sharon, I mean, she's a lady and... And she's doing something now for the children, which is fantastic. But uh, I come from the real world where, you know, you had to be the governor. Uh, you know. It's a way out, isn't it? And it's a, well, thank you. It's a way out. And I'll tell you what's happened. See, people don't understand. Like, they can't mean that they've read the article. All they're doing in your life story. They, you know, this took me 11 years to get my movie where it's going now. I had a phone call yesterday. We've got the 10 million for the movie. The book comes out in three months. It was written by Peter Gerard, one of the top writers in the country. And I said to him, well, what did you think of the story? He said, it'll be a bestseller. 
and I spoke to the Cedric and Jackson, they said it'd be a best of it, it's fantastic. We know it's violent, but that was the life I'm in. I think, we got, some, I think we got some faxes from well, You're now out of the life of violence, and Barbara from Bethnal Green thinks you could build on your acting career because she thinks you would make a great James Hewitt. <laughs> this is the man. <laughs> Look at that. So, funny enough, let me tell you a story. You'll like this because this is true. When I was doing that Bruce Willis thing, right? Now you know I've got a right poxy dressing room. <laughs> That's rankled, hasn't it? Yeah. So, uh, he's not uh, taking it well, has I've he? I've got a poxy dressing room, so... We've so got, he's got, got the best dressing room here tonight, got, I promise. I've got a poxy dressing room, so I've always told, come on, be nice, be one of these lovies, I wish you won't get no more work. So, <laughs> so I'm being, oh, hello, thank you, hello, thank you, hello, thank you. I thought, well, if I say that, I'm going to go wrong. So anyway, I'm going, hello, thank you, hello, thank you. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, Sharon, you got a fax. Oh, yeah, that fax. Tell me what that fax was. Well, this question you kind of already answered, but it'd be quite interesting because obviously Tyson was kind of from from the streets as well. Uh, and this yeah. is says, how would you fight Tyson? I mean, well, let me tell you. When I was a younger man, say like in my twenties, I mean, I'm not giving myself a G. I'm really, really. When I was in my twenties, I was Mike Tyson with no gloves on. I was mustard. I was mustard. But you had to be. You had to be because. <laughs> I was, you, you know, I mean, that's how I got a living. I mean, uh, and I was good. But you were known as the hardest man in London. Did, you, yeah. did that mean that people were always coming out of a no, no, you had to keep proving no, yourself? No, I, I find that, yeah, then I was always proving, fighting, proving. You'd, you'd be minding the club, you'd get a little firm over there, ten in, and they made five drops of scotch, then they made six, and when they walked in, it was hello, and they made ten drops of scotch, they were like, they're looking at you, and they want to fight you. And I'm looking at them, and I say, don't you dare, because I will kill you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I mean, I want to get away from that life now, and I really fancy the acting. You know, and uh, well, I'm enjoying you, knock. A lot of people are. We got a fax here from Eamon in Hayes. Uh, compliment to you. He said he's seen your fight, and it was a hell of a fight. You're the governor, as far as he was Thank concerned. Thank you very, very much. Ladies was and gentlemen, Lenny McLean. Oh, he graduated from TV stardom. To TV stardom, he was the booze runner, you probably remember, in that hit series, The Knock. Now he's facing his ultimate battle. Here to tell us about it, will you welcome the governor, Mr. Lenny McLean. <laughs> Last time we met, you're in the knot. Yeah. Now you've been mixing with some really hard men, haven't you? Vinny Jones, he was here last week with this yeah, film. Yeah, nice man, Vinny. Good man. You definitely. got the book out, The Governor? That comes out in July. He was scheduled for September. You're like, you're a man in a hurry at the moment, aren't you? Well, Lee? they don't know if I'm going to be alive in September, so they bring it out in July. Is it, as, is it as bad as that? I've got cancer of the head, of the brain, cancer of the lung, and I'm paralysed down one side. I'm sorry to hear that, mate. But I will fight till the end. And I'll just go out like a man. I mean, I can't imagine you being frightened of anything. I'm not frightened of no man or beast. Remember, the governor doesn't mean to say you can fight this guy or fight that guy or fight that guy. It's what's he there? When they told me I'm going to die, all I'm going to do is get all my affairs in order and go like a man. That's why it's called the governor. The governor doesn't mean to say I can fight you. It's what's in the ribcage. And I'm a strong man, and I don't remember coming in, and I won't remember going out. How did you find out you were ill? How did you react to uh, it? I took my wife and Ollie to uh, Venture Futurist, and I couldn't lift the case. And I had to ask the man over there who's 70, could he lift the case? And I said to my wife, this ain't right, I'm the governor. That man's 70, and he's removing my case. So when I come back, I went to the hospital, they done a scan, and said, you got cancer of the brain cancer of the lungs and I was paralysed down one side. Lenny, tell me this, we, we were talking about boxing with Tony a minute Fantastic. ago, you were an unlicensed boxer. I've seen film of you fighting yeah. that the people who now have that footage will not let us show on television anymore because they say it's too frightening. It's too they violent. wouldn't let us show it again today. Do you think that the kind of punishment that you took in the kind of bouts that you fought in has, has perhaps contributed to your illness in any way? I think Anyone who's trying to ban boxing today is an idiot. What it does, it gets kids off the street that would wind up in prison. It puts them on, 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 on a tunnel 
that's going to put money in the pot. You hear a kid from the East End who ain't got a lot of brains who can fight. That's his only chance to get his big ass and get out of the jungle. And if he's in the jungle, he'll wind up in prison. He gets out of the jungle. So if one guy dies out of a thousand, you've got to take that percentage because if you ban it, it will go underground and mm. people will be seriously But the, fight, the fights you were in, Lenny, were underground. Yeah, but I'm a one-off. I'm a one-off. So don't forget, look, I'm a one-off. There is 20,000 street fighters out there ain't getting a tanner. I'm a one-off. I'm the governor. I'm a one-off. So and you won a lot. You won a lot of money fight, fighting in, in America. I remember. Wasn't there a story? Didn't you tackle with the mafia? Yeah. What I, what, tell me what happened there. Uh, some business people arranged for me to go to America. I met some people uh, came to the airport. Uh, they took me to the plaza. The next day, I met some business people and had a bare knuckle fight. Broke both my hands. Went back to the hotel and I said to my pal. I think we better wait at Kennedy Airport in case they come back with guns for their money back. <laughs> so we sat at Kennedy Airport for 10 hours, flew back to London, I'll give him three grand, took the wife home 26 grand, and the kids come in and said, Daddy, you've been fighting again, I'll be halfway around the world. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, but I'm a, I'm a one up. I'm not giving myself a G because I'll, I'll be dead in six months. What I'm saying is this you cannot ban boxing because what happens? The young kids, yeah. how are they going to get their few quid? Someone like someone who can have a fight. What, what has, not too much in my brain. What right? has really yeah. been the most difficult fight of your life? F forget your illness for now. What's the nastiest, most vicious fight you've ever been involved in? A gypsy fight where uh, I had a bare knuckle fight on uh, a caravan site. I won the fight. When I went back the next day with the money, they tried to shoot me. But when the caravan got the money and. Uh, you know, it just ain't all, all the way through my life. It's been aggravation. So, uh, you know, do you want to say Yeah, no, I was just going to say, because, I mean, you know, uh, my dad died of, um, d died of cancer. Um, uh, and it, you know, really cut me up very badly, very badly indeed. And you, you got to fight it, mate. I mean, yeah. I know I, you will. You, I, I and you're like, right, you know, it is, it is in there. You've got to actually fight you know, it hard. Uh, well, it's like running a marathon every day. You feel knackered. Yeah. I mean, when else would it come on here? I come on here because the guy who's with the book, Peter Gerald, he's a great writer, and uh, you know he said, "Can you come on?" I said, "I will crawl on there, you know, just to, you know, give the book a due." Because this book is not about a gang who go and interfere with the ordinary public or the guy at the bus stop. This is about one man's fight against oh. tough guys. Oh. Any any regrets, Lem? No, I should go out like the governor. Yes, oh. When they put me in that big photo, I went like the governor. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, I hope you live to see it become a bestseller. This man is a fighter. He is the governor. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lenny McLean. Right. We've got, got, some, got some big ladies you might like here, Len. Don't get too excited, will you? Thank you very much. This is the moment a lot of people have been waiting for. Now, I'd like to say they've been backstage putting the finishing touches to the routine. Well, they've actually been backstage finishing off the beef on the bone that we had in here earlier. Will you please welcome Bournemouth's answer to the Spice Girls, the very large Slice Girls! <laughs>